Hey Piet, welcome to our podcast, Kim Davis podcast. So last time we spoke about when a boy becomes a man, and we spoke specifically about three aspects hmm. um, in in that journey, and the one was um, taking responsibility, number two was being selfless, and number three, sur- surrounding yourself with the right men. Brotherhood. Brotherhood. Um, and I think today we should maybe expand a little on what it means to take responsibility. As men, mm. we have this definition for masculinity in Camp David that we that we go around teaching guys, and it goes like this: um, reject passivity, take responsibility, and lead courageously. And um, you know, if you if you're stuck in passivity, it's going to be quite hard to take responsibility. You're going to be stuck. You know, it's like a big ship. <laughs> if it's not going somewhere, it's stuck in one place. The rudder, the steering is not going to work. Um, and even a jet ski is the same way. Yeah. You can turn all you want. If you don't give some gas, you're not going to go around the corner. Yeah, YouTube is full of videos of people <laughs> not turning, <laughs> pretty, not, not giving throttle when they pretty try Pretty funny videos, yes. So maybe today, just to be a little bit practical, <clears throat> theoretical and practical, hmm. let's discuss um, what it means to take responsibility. Because as a man, as men, we need to be responsible. Yeah. And if we, if we just start you know, being simple about this, if you break up that word, response and ability, we can almost just stay on that point, you know. It's, yeah. we were created with an ability as men um, to live in a certain way, to be in a specific um, character as men, representing the manly side of God. Mm. And um, if we, we have to respond in a certain way to that ability. If you respond in passivity, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to become who you were meant to be. Mm. You're not going to reach your God-given purpose or even walk in it. Um, so the way we respond is pretty important. Yeah, uh, and especially if you if you look at it from that perspective, um, if you take the, the parable of the, the talents into consideration, um, if you take that, if you if your response to the, the the authority and the ability that you've been given is to hide it, which is passivity, passivity then it's quite clear what, what the word says, God feels about that. Mm. And um, even what you've been given then will be taken away. Mm. And um, it's quite it's quite clear. It we don't have to it's not one of those we have to really struggle to understand. Yep. Um, so definitely I mean and I think taking responsibility is part of very, a very big part of, um, rejecting passivity Mm. because when you reject passivity, that means that you take up responsibility to do something. And, um, as we always say, uh, to, to the young men, um, and all of the men that we, um, talk to and, and disciple is that they must start serving in the church. Mm. Um, in the church that they are, um, they must start serving because by serving, they are taking responsibility and they will learn and find mm. out by doing that what they are good at and where they can most effectively mm. be used. <clears throat> I think that's a good, I mean, even if you look at Genesis, you know, um, Adam and Eve were giving responsibility, Adam first to name all the animals mm. and to reign over creation. Eve were put in the picture to, to reign with him and then they lost, you know, they lost that responsibility, yeah. that role they needed to play. And I mean, the only way they, they lost it, the reason is that they were influenced um, by the enemy, mm. by the devil himself. And he, he didn't come, you know, and just knock them out or push them off the road. He deceived them. Yeah. He made them doubt what they already had, which I think is a pretty big thing today. Um, I mean, God said he made them in his image, in, the, in his likeness. Mm-hmm. And then Satan said, if you eat of this fruit, you will be like God. Yeah. And they believed that subtle lie that they needed to do something more to be like God. And for men today, it's the same thing. Oh. We still think we have to perform do something specific, do more things to be who we were meant to be. Yeah, and uh, and and the, the strange thing about that is that 
if you if you go back to the root and you spend more time with God, that just flows from that. Because when you spend time with God, there's no way that you can be passive. Mm. There's no way you can just sit back and relax because it'll be stirred in your heart um, to do something, to make, go out and make a difference. You will start seeing all the hurt that is there, there is in the world and you will start making a plan to sort it out and you will take responsibility for what you can do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, so no, I definitely agree with that, and um, it's it's a very good point um, about our authority, as as humans, um, what we have to do on Earth, because if we don't take that responsibility, um, then the old saying applies: um, for evil to prevail, all it takes is for good men to do nothing. And in the the sad thing about that is is that the reverse of that is for for evil not to prevail is good men to just do something yeah. i mean it, it doesn't even have to be necessarily that significant mm. just to do something just to to pack out the chairs if if your church still has to pack out chairs every sunday morning just waking up a little bit earlier getting to church packing out mm. the chairs and and serving in that just doing something is already making a difference absolutely and if you you take into consideration um how the path of a man looks with regards to taking responsibility for me it seems that um the the top part the the apex of of taking responsibility gets to the point when you are married and you have children because that's the the area in your life where you've taking responsibility of the most things and the most because you've got your business the the vocation god put in your life you have to take responsibility of your family Mm. you have to take responsibility of your relationship with your wife the relationship you have with your children um you have to take responsibility of your children and and how that that looks um and then you also have your ministry if that is not your vocation um and you won't be able to do that efficiently if you don't get certain things in place mm. when you are younger. For, for instance, in my case, um, when I was younger, I was an idiot with regards to finances. Mm. And now my family is having to suffer with me through it while I take responsibility now. But now it's a bigger mess because mm. it's not just me anymore. Um, and, and that's something that I think we should, should look at. Um, how does that path look um, moving towards that apex of responsibility um, and getting all of the things together to make sure that the, taking this responsibility, sorting that out, getting from there um, to the next part and to the next part. So by the time you get there, you are a efficient, capable, adequate mm-hmm. man. Yeah, that's good. I, I think... Um the, the danger of, of what we're saying might, to the listeners, might be that, um, but how do I take all this responsibility? Mm. But I think the answer is, is simple. You know, you don't have to start with the big things. No. You, you grow in taking responsibility. You grow in your capacity to be um, trustworthy in the small things. Mm. So whatever's in front of you, take responsibility of that. Yes. It might be making your bed in the morning or... <laughs> Washing the dishes for your mom or whatever, you know. Yeah. Don't let her wash your clothes every day, every week. Mm. Now take, do something small, take that responsibility and grow as your capacity expands. And then, you know, little by little, as you take responsibility, your authority, your um, influence um, on the people around you expands as well. Mm. And you automatically start stepping into who you are created to be, into um, your purpose. Yeah. And you'll find the peace in that. You'll find um, something else driving you. Because the moment you taste that you're starting to do what you're meant to be, meant to do, oh. something else happens in your heart. The drive comes by itself. Yeah. You don't have to fabricate everything or you know, discipline yourself to do what needs to be done. Sometimes it starts with good discipline. Yeah. You know, I'm going to make myself do this. Get up at four. Mm. You know, they say good habit takes three weeks. The first week it's unbearable 
<laughs> Second week is uncomfortable. The third week you become unstoppable. Yeah. <laughs> and that's discipline. You need strong discipline to start something. But then as the momentum um, starts to snowball, mm. then you just start running and it becomes easier. Yeah. Uh, and you, you start getting stronger in that. Um, so that it's very true of my life. I've, I've seen that um, in the beginning, it's, it's difficult. But as the longer you start doing those things, the more you start seeing the benefits of that. In the beginning, you're so stuck on looking at yourself and why it's difficult and all that. And just by pushing through that, mm -hmm. doing that difficult thing, um, being uncomfortable in that moment um, and realizing that you will start seeing results. Um, when those results start coming in, mm -hmm. you're going to start seeing, oh my goodness, this is I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. um, if we take the... Um, outreach that we were on last year when we went to Nepal. Um, I had to lose quite some weight um, just to make sure that the trek was easier and that um, I didn't take up unnecessary key, unnecessary kilos up the mountain. Um, but just by doing small things, just by making sure that I look at my diet, just mm -hmm. looking at something small in my diet, um, just by making sure that I exercise consistently, not necessarily even big things, just consistently, just doing something every day. Small responsibilities. Small, small responsibilities made a big effect. And I mean, I eventually, I think I lost something like 10 kilos um, just by doing something small. And that was, yes, that was probably for like, about like three months. Mm -hmm. And I could have probably lost a lot more. But by being consistent, I've been able to keep it off as well because I've been able to keep it going. And I think that's why it's so difficult sometimes because everybody these days, the culture is quick fixes. So you want to lose the 10 kilos in two weeks and there are ways to do that. But then you're going to struggle because when you stop doing that, because it's very uncomfortable, it's and sometimes even um, dangerous to, to do that. When you stop doing that, mm. the, the problem is that lot of it comes back and especially with weight loss uh, um, sometimes it comes back even more so, so that's think, maybe a good uh, word to go on uh, consistency yeah i mean just speaking on the, the quick fixes you know when we drive somewhere we aim aim at reaching our destination instead of enjoying the journey yeah and i think in life especially for us men we need the adventure Mm. of the journey not just reaching the goal being successful <laughs> the success i think specifically in the kingdom of god is the journey he takes us on yeah. and consistency on that journey is what really matters i mean i'm just thinking of you know my kids is a little bit coffee these days <laughs> and we give them medicine but if we give it every second or third day mm. um it's not gonna work it's not gonna have the same effect it's going to take them three times longer to get healthy again. Yeah. Um, but if we do it consistently three times a day, as we should every day, it's going to have the best effect. So consistency plays a huge role in taking responsibility. Oh, yes. Absolutely. And I, and I think it's, it's very true as well, because um, if you look at, if I take into consideration when, um, for some of the companies, companies that I was working, the days when I didn't arrive on time was the days that um, I was called out. But the days I was there, every time I was supposed to be there, there was no issues. Mm -hmm. And that's, so it's, it's very true. And I mean, um, in, in life, we, we sometimes feel, but I've been consistent the whole time. But the problem is that day that you're not. Mm -hmm. Just by doing the, right, the, the same thing every day, even though it might feel to some extent a bit boring, the effect can be huge. Mm. by doing that consistently and um yeah that's that's a, a very big thing i think um if i if you, you're talking about our children i mean if i look at pierre currently he's learning to play chess now and um yesterday i was so intrigued actually i talked to my wife last night about it um your sons were talking about the games they won because they they've been you know, they, their skill level is a, a lot higher than his. Um, but when I asked him, um, did you win any, win any games? He was like, no. And he was okay with it. 
And I said, like, did you enjoy the, the chess? He was like, yeah, I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. <clears throat> and I was like, oh, my word. Why are you not, you know, wanting to win? And then I realized he's enjoying the journey. He's enjoying learning. He's, he's seeing how it plays out. So, okay, yeah, he loses because he does this. But he's actually learned, okay, if you do this, then you can adjust that there. And I think that'll definitely have an effect in long term, um, not just with chess, but with, with life as well, because yeah. that's, that's his approach. He's definitely teaching me a lot of things about life, um, as children sometimes do. Um, and I think that's what the, the amazing thing is with, with regards to that, because something I tried to teach them, my, my children, was that in the morning when they wake up, they must make their beds. And this weekend, my daughter was with um, the grandparents. And um, the first thing they told me was so amazing because when she woke up, her bed was already made. She already had clothes on and then she went to them. And they were like, this is so amazing. I'm like, wow, it's actually such a small thing. Mm -hmm. But it makes a big difference. So just to, to keep with the kids right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, thinking of Adam and Eve, um, they had a choice to listen to the deceit. Mm. fall for it or stay with the truth and some most sometimes we have a specific choice you know it's black and white we can choose yeah but other times people are stuck in these situations that's so hard so unfair they can't control the environment mm. and it's much more difficult to take responsibility in those situations oh yeah am i just thinking of a boy that plays rugby with one of my boys um he's his house circumstances are really bad but his mom and his dad, I don't know all of it, but I mean, I can just see in the way he acts. Mm. And when they practice every day, he fights with most of his teammates. <laughs> and when they play a game, he's always angry at the referee mm. because the referee is unfair and he's going to tip back on now and eat with the first. His reaction is really bad because of the unfair circumstances. And it doesn't matter how many times we tell him we can't control the ref, but we can control our actions. Mm our reactions that's what matters you know the the, the worse he, he he reacts and he has outbursts and he rebels and so for him his circumstances is really bad mm. and he's struggling to learn what it take what it means to take the responsibility where he can and i mean what do we say to people that's in difficult situations that has no choice or influence on their circumstances I, yeah, that's that's always a difficult thing, but I mean that's that's what responsibility is. It's taking res you take responsibility for your actions, um, whether the circumstances are fair or not. Um, because let's be honest, life is not fair. Life is hard. Um, none of us have been given uh, necessarily have been given a fair deal. Um, there have been things. For for instance, my my mother died when I was eighteen. That's not fair. But, um, okay, my reaction wasn't the right one either, but um, that, that's the, the whole thing. I have to now take responsibility for my actions, for what I did when, mm. when I re act, acted upon that, um, instead of taking responsibility for what happened and doing what needed to be done. Mm. Um, and, and that's the thing. It's, it's something as small as just looking at how you respond to that. Mm. And, I mean, that's what we bring us back to what you initially said about mm. responsibility. Yeah. Um, what is our response to that ability? And um, there's a there's a lady that that gave a quote about that, and I think this this applies. Um, she she says um, she talks about moments in our life, and it's and it's not the moments that define us, but our choices and our reactions that make us who we are. Mm. Um, in the choices. Um, resides our biggest potential and that is called responsibility mm. um, and and I think that is what is so so important is that we we realize that if we remember a moment as happy it's because we've taken we took responsibility of that and we made a choice that mm. that memory is a happy one um, if I just think about the movie um, where they have all the feelings in the head and all that. Um, can't remember the name now. But 
if if we look at at that movie then then they see that the girl remembers it as a happy memory but if they take it a little bit back it was a sad memory um, but because something happened and uh, people reacted in a certain way it's a remembered as a happy memory mm -hmm. and and because of that um i think it's very important that uh us as uh, us adults as men in the in just society need to be an example and try and be an example to to people like that that don't necessarily have that at home um where this is what's happening this is how we react to that because we also have i mean you and i both have in the work that we do in life we also have things that happen to us that are very unfair but the way we react to that and the way we look forward to that is something we'll push through it mm. um is sometimes a great way for our children to see okay so this is our dad used used to do this and this is what the action mm. the, the the outcome was and that's why it it's good for me to look at it the same way mm. and i think that is why it's so important for us as men by the time we get to the place where we have children, we need to have sorted that out. Mm. And that's why it's important from a young age to start looking at these things. When, Absolutely. Um, when you're a teenager, start maybe putting certain things in, into place mm. that, will, you, that you will be able to build upon so that by the time you get to being an adult that has to raise children, those things are sorted out. And I think that's what we talked about mm. in our introduction last week as well. But there's a scripture that I can't find, find now that says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Yes. And I think part of the, the lie that we see that the enemy brings in the process of demasculating men yes. is it makes you feel powerless, like you're stuck. Mm. You can't get out of this. There's nothing you can do. This is your life. You're just going to stay here. <laughs> and most almost all of the times in those lies men reach for addiction strong things that get them get them even deeper in these black holes just dark no. holes and i think if we can throw that lie away mm. um, all of us can make a difference by the decisions we make i mean all of us will somewhere be in the most difficult unfair challenges in our lives mm. no nobody just has it easy there's no way no. Life is our point, full stop. So, but all of us have the decisions, the ability to make small good decisions that will turn and make a big effect later on. Yes. All of us, that's, I mean, that's the truth. God will never put you in a situation where you have no decision, where you can make no difference. That's not the God we worship. No. If he's a good God, we believe that, and there's no darkness in him, then he will always give us a way out. That's what Paul says. Yeah. If there's a, a trial, he will never be tested above your ability and he will always give you a, a, a way out. Always. Yes. And that sounds like a promise to me, you know? And and that's, that's that it seems like it, it, it also, also feels like that's where it gets into um, God uses all things together for good for mm -hmm. those who are in him. Because when we start, and fight, we start looking for him, and, and taking that responsibility and um, that situation will be turned. Mm. And because of that, there will be light when there was supposed to be darkness. So, of course, there's certain things that play a big role in, in our situations. Okay? Yeah. Um, many people think that God is on my side. This will work out. <laughs> it's not totally true. We are supposed to be on his side. <laughs> yes. And that makes all the difference mm. in the world. That determines how we think. Mm. And as we think, so we are. Yes. So that's why the Word of God is so important. The more time we spend in the Word of God, building relationship with the living God, mm. you know, being His children, his, be, be, Him being our Father, the more we start thinking in a Christ-like manner, we start acting the way He does, making His type of decisions, and things will change in our lives. Yeah. I mean, that's everybody's got a bad connotation with brainwashing, mm. but if you look at the words, it's brain washing so it's your brain that's being cleaned and that's exactly what spending time on the word is it's yep. it's getting getting your mind clean and mm -hmm. thinking about the ways 
um, of of life in the way that God thinks about yep. people. That's Selfishness is brainwashing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Making yourself thinking in a new way. To to get that, yeah, and and I and I think um, the situations that we, we we talked about is something very interesting that we will look at the the discussions when we look into um, selflessness and um, brotherhood because those are, are big things, and not to talk too much about that, but just maybe a little bit of a teaser, um, and is that in those situations when it looks darkest. It must be a, a case of you need to be selfless enough to be okay by doing everything that you need to do, whether you think it makes a difference or not, knowing that it will make a difference. Yep. And in that same thing, reaching out to brothers, because I must say in some, some of the darkest times of my life, by reaching out to my brothers, I was able to get through it. Mm. And if they weren't there, I'd probably still be stuck there. But that's maybe just some teasers for, for the next few weeks. So Pete, maybe to end this off with, um, you know, just to recap, there's nothing that anyone, no situation or dark hole that anyone can be in that you are so stuck that there's no way out. Mm. There's always hope. Jesus is the pinnacle, the message of hope. Yes. He's the hope giver. So going to him, I'm asking him to help you make all the you know, the little decisions that you can make, taking those small responsibilities will make the biggest difference in the long run. And then being consistent in that. Mm. Keep doing the right things, taking the small steps will change the direction. Get you out of that, that deep hole that you're in. I think that's the biggest thing. And then as you grow in your capacity of taking more responsibility, having more influence, having more authority, um, you know, of course, humility goes with that. Yes. Um, the more you grow in that, the more God will bring on on your journey to represent Him in a better way, mm. to build His kingdom in a better way, and to be who you were meant to be and to walk in your God-given purpose. Definitely agree. So thank you. That was fun. <laughs> See you next time. See you next time.